Welcome to a lesson in which we'll find a power series solution to Hermite's equation of order n, which is a differential equation y double prime minus two xy prime plus two ny equals zero. We will find a solution around the point x sub zero equals zero, and therefore we begin by letting y equal the sum from k equals zero to infinity of a sub k times x to the power of k. And now we need to find y prime and y double prime. To find y prime, we differentiate the power series for y with respect to x, using the power rule of differentiation. However, since the first term of y is a sub zero, a constant, and the derivative is zero, we have y prime equals the sum from k equals one to infinity, not k equals zero to infinity, of k times a sub k times x to the power of k minus one, and now we differentiate y prime to determine y double prime. However, once again, the first term of y prime is a constant, and since the derivative is zero, we have y double prime, equals the sum from k equals two to infinity of k times k minus one times a sub k times x to the power of k minus two. And now we perform substitution for y, y prime, and y double prime in the differential equation. Since we know zero is equal to y double prime minus two xy prime plus two ny, zero must also equal the power series for y double prime minus two x times the power series for y prime plus two n times the power series for y. For the next step, we'll distribute the two x into the power series and the two n into the power series. Distributing the two x into the power series, we have the sum from k equals one to infinity of two k a sub k times x to the power of k. Distributing the two n into the power series, we have the sum from k equals zero to infinity of two n a sub k times x to the power of k. And now we need to work on getting the same lower limit for all three sums, as well as the same expression for x in the formula. Let's first re-index the power series for y double prime, so the lower limit is k equals zero. To do this, we replace k with k plus two, which I've shown in blue on the far right. This gives us the sum from k equals zero to infinity of k plus two times k plus one times a sub k plus two times x to the power of k. However, when k is equal to zero, we have two times one times a sub two times x to the zero, which gives us the constant two a sub two and therefore we can write this power series as the constant two a sub two plus the sum from k equals one to infinity of k plus two times k plus one times a sub k plus two times x to the power of k. We'll leave the power series for two xy prime the same. Notice the lower limit is k equals one and the formula also contains x to the power of k. And now looking at the power series for two n y, notice when k is equal to zero, we have two n a sub zero times x to the zero which gives us the constant two n a sub zero. We can write this power series as two n a sub zero plus a sum from k equals one to infinity of two n a sub k times x to the power of k. Notice now all three power series start at k equals one and each formula contains x to the power of k. So for the next step, let's group the constant terms which gives us two a sub two plus two n a sub zero and then we'll combine the power series and then factor out x to the power of k. This gives us the sum from k equals one to infinity of k plus two times k plus one times a sub k plus two, which comes from the first power series. And then we have minus two k a sub k, which comes from the second power series. And we have plus two n a sub k from the third power series. All this is being multiplied by x to the power of k. Now remember, all this is equal to zero, which indicates the constants two a sub two plus two n a sub zero must equal zero which if we solve for a sub two, we have a sub two equals negative n a sub zero. And also all the coefficients of the power series must equal zero, which indicates k plus two times k plus one times a sub k plus two, and then minus k a sub k plus two n a sub k must equal zero. If we factor these last two terms, we can write this as plus the sum of negative two k and two n times a sub k, and we still have equal zero. And if we solve this equation for a sub k plus two, on the right we have a sub k plus two equals the quantity two k minus two n divided by the product of k plus two and k plus one times a sub k. This is our recurrence relation, which we'll use to find the coefficients of the power series. Let's continue on the next slide. Again, looking at the recurrence relation, because we have a sub k plus two on the left and a sub k on the right, the a terms jump in steps of two this also indicates that a sub zero and a sub one are arbitrary constants. 
Notice to find a sub two, k is zero, which gives us negative two n divided by the product of two and one times a sub zero, which I've already written below. And it'll be helpful later to rewrite this as two to the first times negative n divided by the product of two and one times a sub zero. And now let's find the next several coefficients. For a sub three, k is equal to one. The numerator starts as two minus two n, which factors as two times the quantity one minus two. And then we have divided by the product of three and two times a sub one. Since a sub zero and a sub one are arbitrary constants, we'll write the remaining coefficients in terms of a sub zero or a sub one. For a sub four, k is equal to two. The numerator starts as four minus two n, which factors as two times the quantity two minus n. Then we have divided by the product of four and three times a sub two. And we have a formula for a sub two above, performing substitution for a sub two. A sub four is equal to two squared times negative n times two minus n divided by, we'll call this four factorial times a sub zero. For a sub five, k is equal to three. The numerator starts as six minus two n, which factors as two times the quantity three minus n and we have divided by the product of five and four times a sub three. To write a sub five in terms of a sub one, we perform a substitution for a sub three shown above. This gives us a sub five equals two squared times three minus n times one minus n, all divided by, we'll call this five factorial times a sub one. For a sub six, k is equal to four. Factoring the numerator, we have two times the quantity four minus n, divided by the product of six and five times a sub four. Performing a substitution for a sub four, shown above, we end up with a sub six equals two cubed times negative n times two minus n times four minus n, all divided by six factorial times a sub zero. Again, you may want to pause the video to verify these substitutions and that these expressions are correct. And then finally for a sub seven, we have k equals five. Factoring the numerator, we have two times the quantity five minus n, divided by the product of seven and six times a sub five. Once again, performing a substitution for a sub five to write a sub seven in terms of a sub one, we have a sub seven equals two cubed times five minus n times three minus n times one minus n divided by, we'll call this seven factorial times a sub one. Analyzing these coefficients, we should be able to recognize a pattern when the coefficients are even and when the coefficients are odd. When the coefficients are even, we can say that a sub two m is equal to two to the power of m times negative n times two minus n. The last binomial factor in the numerator is given by two m minus two minus n. Then we have divided by two m factorial times a sub zero. Let's test this for a sub six. Notes for a sub six, m is three, which gives us two cubed times negative n times two minus n. The last binomial factor is two times three minus two, which is four minus n, which is true. And then we have divided by six factorial times a sub zero. So that formula works for the even coefficients. And then for the odd coefficients, we have a sub two m plus one equals two to the power of m times one minus n times three minus n. The last binomial factor in the numerator is given by two m minus one minus n. This is divided by two m plus one factorial times a sub one. Again, let's test this for a sub seven where m is three. We have two to the third, and then we have one minus n, three minus n. Again, when m is three, we have the last factor of five minus n, all divided by seven factorial times a sub one. So these formulas do work, and we can use them to write a power series solution. To write down the two power series, recall that a sub zero and a sub one are arbitrary constants. So if we let both of them equal one, we can form y one of x using the formula for a sub two m by letting m equal zero, one, two, three, and so on. And for y sub two, we use the formula for a sub two m plus one, again by letting m equal zero, one, two, three, and so on. And from here we can write our solution, where again a sub zero and a sub one are arbitrary constants, and therefore our solution is y of x equals a sub zero times y one of x plus a sub one times y two of x. Notice that if n is a positive even integer, then y one of x is a polynomial as all the coefficients in the series beyond a certain point are zero. And if n is a positive odd integer, then y two of x is a polynomial. I hope you found this helpful.